everybody. This is Lorraine with BJK University and some great information coming off the Amazon FBA Information Highway. Today we are in part step two on product research. I personally like to use the tool Helium 10. It gives me a lot of movement. The last video that we did was using black box. This allows us to get more technical on what we're looking for in number wise. We can put in uh, how much revenue that we wanna see this product make in a month, um, how many competing products, how much search volume. You really get technical in your numbers and then it will show you one person who's making meeting the criteria and you'll go analyze them and then you'll use their keyword and then pull up the main page and then you'll search and you'll do an in-depth analysis on it. And that's what we showed you in our last video. But today, today we're going to use another tool in Helium 10 called Magnet. Now, Magnet is a lot of freaking fun because you can get creative in Magnet. You can do tons of stuff in here. We're going to get creative. So basically what happens is I spotted a product and it was a trending product and it's this chafing dish, that, but it's more like for home use and it has a lid on it and a little hanger and it's kind of cool. So but make no mistake about it. I'm not attached to this product when I start. This is my starting point. I'm going in thinking, you know what? Let's go see what's going on around this product. It can lead me to something completely different. As I tell everybody, and everybody knows this, I will sell a puppy diaper or a jock strap if it makes me money. Mm -hmm. I'm not attached to that product. It's not about, I want to sell baby products. I want to sell lotions. Oh, I want to sell candles. You know what? If the numbers don't make sense, and if you want these things so bad, go buy them. It's not about what you want, okay? It's what about what the public wants. What does the public want right now? That's what we're going to sell. Here's a golden nugget for you. When you're selling a product and you're looking for that product, what we do is this is the key board. And when I go to Amazon, I'm going to type words on the keyboard to find a product. And I'm going to type it in the way I want it. And that is called a keyword or a set of keywords. It's a keyword, like even if it's three words long, that's the keyword. That's what they're using to find this product. And the more people using it, the search volume goes up. So I'm looking for, I am Jack Sparrow. I'm on the treasure hunt. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go find that keyword. And this is what we're doing. So it's not about what we wanna sell and we never, ever, ever get attached to a product. If it stops making me money, I will cut its line fast. Mm -hmm. Cut, done, out the door. Next, that's my favorite word here is next, okay? So it's made me money. I will not continue to allow it to suck up my um, profits. I will watch the trend if it's going down. If I find out it's not my advertisement or my listing, but I notice the numbers. This is why we always stay loyal to the numbers, not the product, but the numbers. The numbers are what make us in any business whatsoever. It's the numbers. The numbers rock. The numbers show you data. Data doesn't lie. Okay, good to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And then I'm going to show you inside Helium 10. I'm going to show you Magnet. See, this is Magnet. Now, what I did in advance, I haven't looked this up. Otherwise, it would say I did when I pressed search. So I decided to do a long tail keyword. So I have buffet serving, food warmer, chafing dish. So it's actually three keywords in one. And this is called one big long tail keyword. So the only thing I'm going to do is put in my criteria. I always use the same criteria. I would like a search volume of 5,000 to 20,000. That's how many people are searching for this every month. Hey, I will take a nice chunk out of this. I'm good with 20,000 people searching for this. Well, what about 100,000? What about 200,000? There's like thousands of people searching for certain keywords. Well, yes, there are. But the people with deep pockets and a lot of money are, are paying to get these keywords. So what we're doing is we're starting here and we're going to work our way up to that. This is what we want to do. We want to work our way up. So what we're going to do is this is all I'm going to type in. And then I'm going to say get keywords and let's see what it throws at us. Because remember, I put so many keywords in there. I'm trying to do a little bit of confusion on Helium 10 just to see if they'll throw me something else because I have so many different. I'm not that specific to a chafing dish. I got a buffet server. I got a warmer. It could be a buffet food warmer. It could be you know, uh, a food chafing dish. It could be anything, a serving warmer, anything. So I want to see what they're going to do. Right now I have 
I have quite a few, 2,913. I'm not going to go through them all. So I'm going to double, double down on that. And I'm going to do 5,000 to 20,000. It's the only criteria that I want to put in. And then I'm going to apply filter and see what happens. Okay, I have 24 keywords. Great. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I already know because I put 5,000 to 20,000, everything here is in my uh, search volume. But see, there's a lot of numbers that are askew here. There's 9,000 competitors, 10,000 competitors, 10,000. That's too much for me. That's a lot to have to get through because when your product lands at Amazon, you will be 10,001. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to click on competing products two times. Now, this is what I want to see, all the lobies, all the lobies. So what do I have over here? I don't want to sell Sterno. See, one product, even though I'm looking for this, one product can lead me to another. But we do have chafing dish that's up there. We have server rack. Interesting. Chafing dish for buffet. That one has uh, 7,000 search volume. A regular chafing dish has 12,000, but those generic keywords can be highly competitive. So as you can see, you're going to get the same thing. Chafing dish for buffet has only 500 people competing for that keyword, but I have 9,000 people searching for it. Okay. And then down here, I have 12,000 people, but I also have 900, close to 1,000 people competing for that one. Hmm. Interesting. Buffet server with warmer. Now that's a dual one. So we, we can look at that. Respirator mask with filter. Huh? Why are you in there? Now I'm curious. So I'm going to go take a look at it. <laughs> I'm going to let one product, I'm still going to go back and analyze these. But see, these were really hot, especially with COVID coming around. People were getting respirators and things like this. And I actually did analyze this a while back and it, it looked really good. So right up here in the upper corner, this is uh, my app for a uh, helium 10, the three lines, the graph. So what I'm going to do is just like a doctor goes in and gives you an x-ray and x-rays your bones. I'm going to go in and x-ray all these people right here on the main page. And I'm going to go look at the inside of the, I'm going to go look at their numbers. I'm going to look at the bones here. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting for this to light up. And when it does, we're going to see numbers. We're going to see data. And I'm going to show you what is extremely important to know. This is some really important. Okay, we're lit up. So now I'm going to pull an x-ray. So the first thing it's going to show me, of course, we're going to be able to see the keyword respirator mask with filter. But we're going to see how many people are searching for it that month. Then we're going to see who are the sellers that are selling in my, I'm looking at the top 10. I want to see the top 10 who are displaying on this page, not the top 10 revenue makers, just the people who are on the front page. Because people generally buy from the front page. They'll scroll down a little bit and whatever, see right there. I have 7,375 people searching for this one right now. And it's a respirator mask. And now what I'm going to do is see these people are what's called sponsored. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of them because they're paying to be there. This is actually really good. All right. So I have my criteria set within Helium 10. And as you can see, it's set eight out of 10 products have to have revenues over $8,000 a month. And I, I need at least four people out of 10 have to have reviews under $250. So I mean, 250 reviews. So right now, this looks extremely good because I'm hitting it. I'm four out of the top 10 and I got four. Now uh, I'm in the criteria. So what I want to do is I want to remove these guys. So if the first thing we do is we're going to press filter results, hide the sponsored products, and then apply filter. Now, everybody who's paying to be on the page is gone. I just want to see the people who are ranking organically. Now I'm going to look at their prices, 1720, 17, 17, 22, 29. Okay, so there's they're they're in a general area between 17 and 29, but I'm looking at why is this guy 29? What makes him better? Okay, dust mask respirator. Okay, that's a little bit different. Rugged comfort, uh, half face. Okay, so that's why this is a full face with oh, it has the goggles on it. Okay, so this is about the area you want to be in for this, but most times they're a little bit more expensive. 
Okay, so this is what we're looking for. These are for guys who paint, uh, spray painting, sanding, cutting. So this is a good niche to get into. And so not bad, not bad at all. So the first thing I want to do is I want to look at the graph. Right next to the search volume is a graph. I want to see the, the year. Does it stay within the criteria? Yep, it sure does. It doesn't go below five and it doesn't go above. That's really good. That's actually really good. And what I do see is you see these spikes that are going up. You look at when they are, January 16th, uh, August 14th. We had Prime Day, January 15th, day after Christmas sales. Always, see, they can be at a certain level, but they're going to spike at Christmas time. They're gonna spike at Prime Day and they're gonna spike again at around Christmas, December. November, December is going to spike, okay? So let's see over here, December, okay? So you're always, these do not make a difference because we know they're gonna spike on Prime Day. We know they're gonna spike at um, Christmas and um, Black Friday, and we know it's gonna be after Christmas sale because people who overstock want to get rid of the overstock. And then they want to, because uh, this could be, uh, they could be selling it temporarily or they could have overstocked. So they're going to have another sale to, to even bring home some more because people have huge sales after Christmas. Okay, so right now, this looks really good to me. I like what I'm seeing. I've, I'm hitting my criteria, but here's what we're doing. We're going to look first at the brand names. These are the brand names selling. Okay, I do not have three of the same brand names in here. That means this is not brand dominant. It's an open market. I'm pretty consistent in my price, but the one thing I want to take a look at is my FBA fees. So I'm, I'm looking for those FBA. I have review count. See, 175, 154, 46, 59. I'll even take the 329. And then I'll check my next uh, level to, to level 20. And I'm like, one, two, three, four, five. And I'll want to know why he's at 13. Okay, so respirator cartridges. Uh, one pair. So, okay. Helps protect against organic vapors as it, okay. So that's why he's, he's doing this. He's actually selling the cartridges, not a problem. And what cracks me up is the cartridges are more expensive than the whole mask. It's behoove you just get the whole mask all over again, <laughs> but people will not do that. They will not recognize that. Okay. So actually my revenues are looking really good, really, really good. And I only have two Amazons in here. Okay. The one thing you want to know is when you come to seller country and it says AMZ, AMZ, you do not want to see more than two. Three means Amazon is dominating it and you cannot compete against Amazon. Okay. So now here's the FBA fees. I want to bring this over. What we can do it, I've already brought it over. Okay. So $7 out of 17. That is definitely. Very good. I can work with that. It's not half of what my fee is. See, here's what you need to understand. If you are selling at $20, you will need it to be no more than $10 from buying it, shipping it, and your Amazon FBA fees. The total combination of those two, if you are selling at 20, can only be half because your profit level will be the other $10. You're putting in $5 to get it there. You're going, you are expected to make $10 back by keeping everything within the budget. So you need, there are four in your budget, 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%. 25%. Your DDP is how much it costs to make it and ship it to Amazon. That should be $5 in total. Then your Amazon FBA fees, Five dollars in total. So if he's at eight eighteen, you can get this thing very inexpensive from China. You need to be as close to fifty percent because this is a lower priced product. You're going to be using your Amazon FBA calculator, and you're going to calculate what is my sale price, what is my DDP. That's the cost to make your product and the cost to get your product to Amazon. Those are the only two things that you are going to put in there. And then you are going to calculate if you hold on to half 
of the cost of what you're selling it for, you're doing good. You generally want to be about $12 because listen, you cannot advertise on Amazon for the, the lowest amount you can put in is $5. So if you're selling for $20, you, you'll have $5 across the board. So this is how we spend $5 and end up bringing back $10. We always, when somebody buys our product, we get the return on investment back. Okay, so this is how we search. And we actually found a pretty decent product. It, it's, it's looking pretty good to me. People are always like, well, my goodness, it's so hard to find a product. No, no, it's not. It's just that people try to get so analytical and, and, and they don't really know what they're doing. So please, when you get a course and, and somebody's trying to teach you, make sure that they're literally going to show you. Let, have them deep dive in there with you. Show me how to do it. If they have a webinar where they can teach you and show people how to do product research and they're actually finding products, then you know you have a good course. Okay, so chafing dish. Let's just do the chafing dish warmer. We want to go back and take a look at it and let's just see it. It could or could not be. Okay, so this is kind of what we're looking at. These are chafing dishes. I was looking for something. Yeah, see, this is something cool. We see that because I live in Hawaii, we do this a lot. We have luau's all the time. Okay, but we have a lot of inconsistency with price. But that's because this is single. This is like fours. Some of them are professional. Some are some of them are aluminum pan style. So there's a lot going on here. We'll be able to narrow it down, but this is generally the one. Uh, but I will show you. Um, here, this is more or less what I was looking at. Let me see right here. So this is what I was looking at. See how cute that is for home. You can have a few of these on the table and the lid, you put it back down. But when you want to serve and everybody's there, people don't have to keep on lifting the lid, put it down, lifting, and you don't know where to put it. It has a little hook that's on there. And I thought that was ingenious. See, this is really cool. And so now they can have it up. And when everybody gets what they want, you can put it down and keep it warm. And it has a sterno under it. So that I thought was pretty cool. This would be something I would look at selling. But the numbers under the chafing dish have to be, you know, they, they have to show good margins. So what I want to do again is I want to pull an x-ray. So I'm going to open up my helium 10 x-ray. And we're going to go ahead and take a look. Let's go look at the numbers. Do the numbers make sense? Is the graft good? Is it brand dominant? Are there low enough reviews? Oh my, we might have found another product. Look at that, seven and six. That's actually really good. That's really good. And I'm within my criteria, 5,000. Very nice. Very nice. Very, very nice. So here's my search volume and I'm going to go open the graft and I want to take a look at my one year. Okay, so it started off over here and it ended up up here. So it may be finding its ground right now, but generally this is kind of a low keyword. I would be able to use this as a kickoff keyword, a launch keyword. This is, is steady all year round as a launch keyword. So I wanna use something that's a little bit lower for a launching along with my main keyword, because when I can get to page one on this lower keyword, I'm gonna pull up my other keyword. So when people start seeing it and buying from me on that page, because I'm on page one and I'm up at the top, my other keyword that has more search volume is going to tag along for the ride and it's going to get pulled up. So this is not bad as a launch keyword. I would want something a little bit more steady, but as a launch keyword, definitely I would use this one unless we have some issues. Nope, we do not have brand dominance. These are... Um, you have different types of chafing dishes here. So what we're going to do is we would end up clicking on the ones that look exactly like what we want to sell. One, four, or, or eight, you know, we want to click on the ones like 168, 169, 111 is a little bit lower. Or I could decide to go with 123, 98, 111, you know, right in there. We want to click on all of them that match what we want to sell. Apples to apples, not apples to oranges. And when we do, we're going to do what's called a reverse ASIN. And then we're going to find what they're using for keywords. And we're going to get a sol more solid keyword. I'll be able to show you that in a minute. But it's also showing you how many sales they're making per month. 1,000, 6,900. Wow. 300, 11,000. So the this one is Sternos smart to be advertising in here. It doesn't belong, but 
they're picking up sales because they're using the sterno page. So, I mean, they're using the chafing dish page in order to use that keyword. So I've got really good revenues going on in here. And anytime you see NA, these guys could be out of stock. Okay, so I have Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. That's scary. Oh, but this one is Sternos. So that means the chafing dish only has two Amazon right there on my top 10. And I will I would run with that one. So now I have good reviews. You know, they're about four or five. I like to stay around four or five. That means it's a good product. But it also has a little bit lower. And what that tells me is there's room for improvement. That's pretty cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to go inside and we're going to look. We're going to look at them. I want to see. Mm -hmm. I want to see what sizes. I'm going to take a look at the sizes. I'm going to look at the weight because the weight is what's going to cost you. I want to see how long it's been around. It's been around since 2016. This is a solid product. Okay, so now if I close this out and I pick somebody, mm, let me see. He has 378 reviews and we're going to click on him, bring up his main page. And then we're going to go inside and take a look at him. Look at what he's doing. And so now I want to go back to the ratings. So see, it'll show you a, a must buy wrong item compared to the video. So this is the best and this is the worst. They'll show you both and they'll put that up on top. And then you can start looking through the reviews. Very nice economy. Okay, so what are the things that they're looking at? Easy to clean for catering, clean, easy, chafing dish, good quality for the price. They're sturdy. Two of the stands were, as probably sounds like maybe it was broken. So we would want to know what's going on here. So we would actually just click each one of the ratings. I'm just going to do the one stars just to show you. And so it'll show you who put a one star up there and what they are. Okay, so wrong item compared to the video. Impossible to separate the lid from each other when trying to unpack sharp edges, thin metal, uh, dented dish. And that's not good when it comes dented. They'll, they'll get a return for it. And that goes on your plate as a return. So you cannot have more than 20% return. So if you have 200, you can't have more than 20 returns. Otherwise, Amazon will flag you. They will have you correct it. And if it's not corrected and you get more returns, they can close that listing as a defective product. So item does not look like the one in the picture. Hmm. And it's broken. One of them was broken. All right. So one. That's not bad for how many reviews he has. He has over 300 reviews. And he's got two products there. Right? There's like four. That's not bad at all. Okay, and he's got like tons of good ones. So I, I have uh, two stars as well. And I think, okay, one he's only got one two star. It's not worth the money to, to found that helpful. So now I want to take a look at his three star. And then I'll remove these. See, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a way to improve the product. So when I sell it and I choose this product and I sell it, I'm going to have an improvement. So whoever's getting re bad reviews, because I'm going to look at everybody else's two on that main page. I'm going to pull them up just like this because I want to see what's going on inside. I want to see what people are complaining about. I want to know. I want to know their data. I want to know, is it brand dominant? I want to know, is there enough room for me to get in because there are people up there with low reviews and I'm coming in with zero. I'm brand new. I'm getting in there. So I need to be able to get in there. And if I don't see anything in the top 10, maybe there's three and I don't quite hit that four. Well, I'll go to the top 20 because people scroll below the top 10. But a lot of times people buy what they first see, but usually they'll scroll down. So if your listing and your picture looks really good, it's going to catch their eye. You want to create what's called pattern interruption. So if you're doing a chafing dish, you may want to put a little small little ebook as a cookbook right next to it with color on it. So now their product and this. So everybody sees chafing dish, chafing dish, chafing dish, and then there's chafing dish and a colorful ebook right there. I'm like, oh, what is this? Now you've caught people's attention. They're going to click on it. And when they click on it, make sure those pictures that you have coming next are really good and they will stay. And you have a really good shot of making the sale because they've clicked on you. They saw your listing, you created a pattern interruption on that page. And so now your, your photographs look great and your listing is nice. And it looks like, hmm, I think I'll buy this one. They really spent their time 
they took time. So now they'll go, open, they'll look at a couple others and they'll see that it's like, well, this one is this and this is that. And this one says it fixed the problem. This is how you get sales. So Helium 10 is a great tool. One product can lead you to another. Never get stuck on a product and always stay loyal to the numbers. I really hope this helped in get, giving you a little bit of understanding. I mean, we basically found two products live right, right here. So um, it's, it's not hard to do. Don't overwhelm yourself. Well, I can't find anything. I can't find anything. Slow down, take a breather, go watch a movie, get an ice cream, walk the dog, you know, come back with fresh eyes and, you know, see it as a game. Okay, game on. I'm going to do this. Oh, let's find product today. So go into Magnet and play around. Just play around with the words. I've even done it where I have done words that make totally no sense. Red brick, mantle, clock, or mantle, picture, door. I put a whole bunch of stuff in there and just said, go for it. Show me what you got. And Helium 10 will just start putting things together and giving me products. And then when I get to things, the, here's, here's the big one. If you see a product that's down there and you don't know what the heck it is, be curious. Be curious. Say, what the heck is that? Click. And I click on it. And it's like, oh, look at that. And then I'll go analyze it in the x-ray. It's like, holy moly, the numbers are good. I just found a really good product that can make me a lot of money. So when I was looking up a chartreuse cutting board one day, I noticed something and it said noodle board. I'm like, what the heck is a noodle board? And why would a swimming noodle be over here? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Let's go find out what it is. A noodle board. Hmm. What the heck is that? And I will click on it. Turns out it was a really amazing product. It really, the numbers were amazing. So it's just another way of talking about a cheese cutting board, but it's the popular way to call it now. So this keyword had become popular and not many people were selling under it. And the reviews were good and the revenues were good. And there was a lot of room to get in there. So always be curious when you're looking. And when your numbers don't make sense, don't be, a, don't keep trying to dig in at it. Just go next and keep looking at the keywords. And sometimes one will lead you to something completely different. Just like we were looking for the chafing dish, it led me to a mask with good numbers. I hope this information um, was helpful for you today. We're going to do some more product research coming down the pipeline. But my next video, it's going to be really good. We're going to show you how to scale your business. It's not difficult. It's just an understanding. And it's all about the data and all about the numbers and what you can do. Okay. And if you like what we're teaching you here, go ahead and click the like button and, you know, share with us. If there's something you want to hear or there's something that you want to see, go ahead and let me know. And we'll see what we can do about getting it up. Thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next video. Aloha.